Forget about the so-called Matt Mercer effect. Even if you were as good as Matt Mercer, you still wouldn't have his players. The success of Critical Role hinges on its cast. First, they bring a huge talent stack most average players simply don't have. Secondly, they see the game in a completely different way. Your players probably see D&D &D through the lens of gamers. Matt's players see it through the lens of actors. There's a big difference, and if you understand it, you can run a better game of D&D &D and become a better player. And we talk about it today on Dungeon Craft. Deathbringer here. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any cool content. Critical Role is the most popular live stream show ever. It's produced an animated series, Vox Machina, fueled sales for 5e products, made D&D &D more accessible for a whole new generation of fans, and the cast had become celebrities profiled in Screen Rant and Entertainment Weekly. If I had gone to a psychic in the year 1995 and they had told me that in 2022, George Michael, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, and Prince would all be dead, but Keith Richards would still be touring, oh, and D&D &D players are now profiled in Entertainment Weekly. I would have demanded my money back. So because of this success, a lot of people want to be the next critical role. And I hate to break it to you, but that's not going to happen. For one thing, there already is a critical role. And no one's going to invest four hours a week in an unknown show. But in addition, the cast of Critical Role has talents that the average D, D player just don't have they're talented actors they're funny they're friendly they seem like nice people and all of them bring something different to the table there's not a weak player among them but there's another less obvious reason why they're so successful they see the game fundamentally different than most players most players see D, &D through the lens of the gamer the cast of critical role sees it through the lens of drama it's a very different way of looking at the game Imagine a scale, if you will, with game over here and drama over here. And on the game side, you have things like rules and character sheets and feats and spells. And on the drama side, you have things like setting, characterization, and conflict. And each player can be put somewhere on that scale. I'd place myself over here. be interesting where you think you would place yourself. And I would place the cast of Critical Role over here as well. They certainly play with rules, but they see the rules mostly as a framework to create the drama. That's why they chose D&D &D when they had played Pathfinder. D&D &D is better known and more accessible to a wider audience. And as actors, the cast of Critical Role has had extensive training. Actors go to school for a long time. They've studied improv, know how to use their voice, how to perform in front of an audience. They make decisions quickly. They don't interrupt one another or talk over one another. They listen to one another, know when to give others the spotlight, and see the game as a collaborative effort. They see the dungeon master as a collaborator, not an adversary. Contrast that with your average D&D &D group. If your group is anything like mine, few if any have taken drama classes and they've never performed live. They see their character as the main character. They talk at the same time, don't listen to one another, and will argue about the rules, and often see the game master as the enemy who's trying to kill them. Dramatists are concerned with the story as a whole. In season three, Travis agreed to have his character, Sir Bertrand Bell, lose 13 levels because it better served the story. Dramatists like flawed characters who have weaknesses. They understand flawed characters are more interesting than invincible ones. They're less concerned with leveling up and more concerned with character arcs and personal growth. They don't mind if their character is defeated or even dies as long as it has dramatic impact. Gamers place a higher value on winning. The rules are very important because the rules are there to keep their characters alive. They're concerned with optimizing their characters, gaining levels, and gaining power. They want their characters to be the best, and they view character death as losing the game. Where you fall on the scale depends largely on your prior acting experience and how you were introduced to the game and by whom. The last cast member to be added to Critical Role was Ashley Johnson, who had no game experience prior to joining the cast. In a recent Entertainment Weekly episode, Ashley said she had no idea what she was getting into. She showed up to what she thought was going to be a board game until Laura Bailey started doing an accent. Why would Matt recruit a newbie to play in his D&D &D game? 
because she's a good actor. It's easy to turn a good actor into a good D&D &D player, but it's more difficult to turn a D&D &D player into a compelling actor. Ashley's a dramatist. The critical role cast are all dramatists. Less concerned with rules and winning and more concerned about telling an interesting story. Quick story to illustrate the dramatic point of view. Years, Years ago, I played in a Call of Cthulhu game at Gen Con. The premise was a group of family members inherited a mansion off the coast of Rhode Island, and whoever spent the night there would get to keep it. And I played Biff, the fiancé of one of the family members, and he was a big, dumb, tough jock, and he was the only one who could throw a punch and the only one with a gun. And as the scenario went on, Deep One started to appear, but Biff was never in a place to see them, so I started playing him off as a skeptic. And at one point, the Game Master and I made eye contact, and she kind of gave me a nod, and I understood what she wanted me to do. Do. Whenever a deep one was coming on screen, I would make sure that I was looking at something else. It would appear in the window, and then when Biff looked at the window, she would make it disappear. And the players were like, there was a fish guy looking in the window. And Biff would say, I don't see anything out there. It's probably a guy wearing driving goggles. And they were like, look, there are tracks. There are webbed tracks in the mud right under the windowsill. And Biff was like, those are just swim fins. I used them when I was snorkeling in Florida. And at the end of the scenario, they were like, Biff. If you're not going to believe us, at least give us the gun so we can protect ourselves. To which Biff replied, You're people are nuts. There's no way I'm giving you this gun. Not only that, I'm going to empty the bullets out so nobody gets hurt. And I'm going to throw the bullets out the window into the ocean to make sure. This technique is called dramatic irony. It's when the audience knows something the character does not. I was lucky because the rest of the players found this hilarious. A hardcore gamer would want to punch me in the face because I'm undermining the party's chances for success and making it more difficult for them to win. But I'm not doing it to be a jerk. I'm doing it because it makes a better story. I'm asking myself, what type of game is this Game Master trying to run? A story of horror, a story of suspense and tension. How do I better support her and build that, even if it means my character loses? Actors know losing is more dramatic than winning. Failing is more dramatic than succeeding. Flawed characters are more compelling than perfect ones. And vulnerable characters are more interesting than invincible ones. It's one of the reasons I don't care for death saves, and I like death at zero hit points. It's not to be mean or nerf the player characters, it's because it just makes for a better story. Question, which is the best Star Wars movie? It's The Empire Strikes Back. And Luke loses everything. He loses his friends, he loses his face, he loses his hand, and he loses his final showdown with Darth Vader. Gamers love that film, but they don't want to lose. When they play a role-playing game, they tend to always want to win. Imagine if your next D&D &D game ended that way, with the players totally defeated, captured, or dismembered. Just imagine their reaction. That's a good gauge of where your players would fall on that game versus drama scale. Now, if you're over here and your players are over here, or you have some players here and other players over here, you're going to end up in a conflict at some point. I have seen it happen in my group. And if you examine the situation, a lot of times it comes down to how these two different types of players see the game. There's one Critical Role cast member who didn't return for the second season, and there was a lot of speculation as to why. But I think if you watch the playback, it's all up there on the screen. They saw their character as the main character, and they also fudged die rolls, which speaks to a desire to win at all costs. And that sort of behavior undercuts the drama and undermines with the rest of the cast is trying to do, so they decided to part ways. I get asked all the time, how do you handle this player situation, or how do you convince your players to play the game the way you want to play it? And my experience is there's no way to do that. For one thing, there's no wrong or right way to play the game. If your players like being power gamers, like if they want to spend all day Saturday building Wolverine as a player character and he's invincible and never going to die, good for you. Find people that like to play that way. If you want to have a more dramatic game, you should find players that share your style. And if you can't find them, recruit them. Do what Matt did with Ashley. Find someone that you think is cool and teach them to play the game the way you play it. So although I don't think you and your friends are going to be the next critical role, you can still learn a lot from them. And the number one thing you can learn is play with people whose company you enjoy and who share your vision as to what's fun. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Also below, you'll find links to Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon, where you can get my House Rules, Deathbringer, and watch an extended version of this video. And you can find more great Dungeon Craft content over here, including my video on how Aristotle's Poetics can help you run a better game of D&D. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20. Deathbringer again. 
Mercer, I'm still waiting for that call to join the Critical Role cast. You skinned Trinket the Bear and turned him into a rug. You think they still remember that? Probably. Well, then just get my t-shirt and watch more Dungeon Craft. <laughs>